and we yeah. can. So we are live. And we just had a little bit of a, a catch up <laughs> before we started. And honestly, Vivian, I am so excited to share this interview with you because what you have done, what you've created for yourself, first of all, is super inspiring. And I think your experiences and your expertise will really, really help other yoga teachers build a career that they dream of but also to come back to themselves and understand their purpose, who they are, what they want to share and really teach from their full, their, their, their authentic and own um, expression. So with the end, thank you so much for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's really my pleasure to yeah, share my knowledge or my experiences both. Yes, amazing. Yes. So we have a lot of people that are joining you joining this interview from your community. They are joining the summit because you've told them about it. But for those that are unfamiliar with your work, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, where should I start? Um, <laughs> from, from, from my career as a yoga teacher, I guess. That, yeah. that started 20 years ago. Yeah. And actually it started by, let's say coincidence, I was driving myself a little bit too hard. I was 35 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And with family, three kids, a career as a CEO and things like that, I drove myself a little bit too hard and having pain in my body occurring a little bit here and there. So somebody recommended me to, no, actually I got the recommendation not to practice that hard anymore because I went very often to the gym doing all kinds of stuff. So um, the therapist told me just to take a walk. And I just, what? I'm just 35. I don't even have a dog. Why, why should I take a walk? Yeah, I, now I, I understand why I should take it. And I do love to take a walk. But at the time, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't understand that. So long story short, uh, I asked him if I could start to practice yoga. And that was quite new at health centers and, and gym in the gym, gym world at the time. So uh, he said yes, and I think he realized that that should be good for me mm -hmm. in a way, not only being, you know, strong and fit, but more the inner work. So I started that way and just um, three months later, my, the pain in the body disappeared and I was asked to run classes if the teacher needed to go away for education or anything else. So I accepted and took my first teacher training. So that's my, my doorway in, in a way, just to save myself. Mm -hmm. And then I started to teach a class or two, perhaps uh, on a regular basis, scheduled classes. And let's say 10 years later, I also started Ayurveda. And there, Ayurveda yoga together, created some kind of a shift in me. So step by step, I started to realize that I didn't want to be a CEO in the cooperating world anymore. So um, I jumped off, off that train and was struggling quite a lot with myself. That was 10 years ago. So yoga wasn't that big as it is now, but still it's it started to grow. Mm -hmm. So I was not over convinced myself, what am I doing? Leaving a career, safe, good money, all that stuff by teaching yoga. So that was, but it took a few months and then I can't think of anything else mm -hmm. actually. But it was quite hard. Not that much what people said, which I was, I thought they should say that I'm crazy, but it was my inner monkey mind actually that was telling me this. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. And especially because you've been, like you, do you develop an identity around being a CEO, being a mom, like having all these different roles in life and suddenly you change to actually being a yoga teacher and share yoga with people that changed is very big so it's almost like finding a new identity isn't it yes it is and of course it didn't come from one day to the other it had 
it started 20 years ago when I took my first teacher's training and, and then piece by piece. So, but I just realized, and I think it was kind of when I left the yoga studio after a class, I felt so fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I felt deeply inspired and humble and touched in a way and started to not evaluate, but compare it with how I felt after a really successful meeting, for instance, or mm -hmm. if the results after a meeting or a campaign or whatever we did at my, in, in, in the other company that I was working for, I can I can't say that I felt just empty, but in a way, just like, wow, this, it didn't inspire me anymore. Um, it didn't, before I had kind of a, 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 I was so much driven to, to, to do that kind of career mm -hmm. and all of a sudden or piece by piece, it, it came into me that it didn't give me that satisfaction. Exactly. Yeah. Didn't and then, then everything feels empty, leaving the kids to go into that work or traveling because I travel all over U Europe. So it was many things that just showed me that this isn't for me anymore yes. in a way. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people do recognize this. A lot of people, they, they, everyone has their own story as to how they discovered yoga and how they started practicing. But for those that also that want to become teachers, for many, it's true that they need to make some kind of change. And that in their previous life, let's say, they, they don't feel fulfilled anymore. They don't have the same satisfaction. And then becoming a yoga teacher is a big change. So tell us a little bit about your first experiences teaching and how you felt about showing up as a teacher, your voice, cueing, all those things that come with finding your voice and expressing yourself. Yeah, that was, mm, I mean, I, I was so, I felt so safe and secure in my, my profession as a CEO even though, of course, I had my challenges there as well. But all of a sudden, I found yoga to heal myself or to save myself from getting burned out, I think. And all of a sudden, somebody asked me quite early in my experience of yoga, can you come and teach every now and then? And I said, whoa, no way, I'm not a yoga teacher. Yeah. And they just said, okay, we will, we will give you, we will give you a yoga teacher training. And I just, wow. So actually stepping from the yogic mat where I just wanted to feel comfortable and heal myself and then stepping into that mat and me, Vivian, as a person, I'm quite curious. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, okay, what could that feel like? How could that be? So I just hear myself saying, okay, I do that, that. Of course, I will support you and help you. But then really having the, those regular classes, my, my own classes, um, I think it was, it was quite new at the time, as I mentioned, in that kind of world, in health centers mm -hmm. and, and, and gym, gym centers. So I think I, I actually grew my comfort and safety and finding my voice together with my students. Right. because they didn't have any experience yeah. so the experiences they actually found them with me and gave me a lot of feedback the feedback in a way they wow what is this oh it feels like this and it feels like that so in a way I was lucky I think mm -hmm. because it was new to them it was new to me so I kind of grew I, I was a little bit a few steps before them mm -hmm. and I kind of realized that, okay, I know something more than they do. So I go from there. Yeah. So piece by piece, I found my voice through them, I think. I was curious and I was a little bit brave. Yeah. But I just investigated, how can I reach into them? Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a little bit different from, from individual to individual, of course, but also now because yoga is so big, ha, has grown. I mean, it's global. It's so many ways to find your voice or mm -hmm. to compare yourself with somebody else. So how can you do that? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But should I give any advice 
the first thing is to find your own voice within you. Because otherwise it's just somebody else that you are trying to copy. And that is, it's, it's really easy to, it's not easy to do it, but it's easy to come into that mm, way of finding your voice, looking at so many other teachers. It's not bad to look at teachers. I have done that myself, mm -hmm. finding inspiration. I like that way he or she expresses herself oneself or that kind of pose and or to explain that or to go in with this meditation or these words or whatever but it's one thing to find inspiration from people it's another thing to try to compare or be like that yeah. person we copy it <laughs> yeah to copy it so exactly. turning inward to find what is it that i want to express what is it that i like and i think i can cue or find words or expressions for them to experience something good within mm. themselves yes this is really beautiful and i think it's interesting for many people to hear how yoga has developed and if you think of it in actually a very short time if you say that 20 years ago you are really exploring this path of finding your voice and how to teach your students in the best way possible meeting their needs by exploring this together. Mm -hmm. And right now, 20 years later, we definitely see that there's so much comparison and people feel so defeated by the other teachers that are already out there and really believe that, what do I have to offer? Why would people come to, come to my class? And finding this unique expression, this authentic self is so hard because like you said, it's so easy to just copy other teachers, mimic their expressions, their way of teaching. But I believe that actually drives you further from your students because you're not able to resonate with them and connect with them authentically. Mm. So what do you, did you do or what kind of advice would you have for people to actually go inwards and find out what it means to them to be their authentic self? Mm. I mean, this, 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 this is nothing that you can learn within 45 minutes or an hour, <laughs> but I should say, of course, but I should say to really ask yourself what are you passionate about not only that you're passionate about yoga okay what in yoga are you passionate about mm -hmm. and what is it that has has touched you deeply and how can you express that in your way with your words with your expressions and sharing experiences and also of course, the cueing, how you cue a pose or a sequence or something like that, because you can put in different expressions mm -hmm. or different words or um, ways of how you can move into it and also add on to for the yogi to listen inward, because I'm the teacher, I'm the guy, but I can, I can never no, I can have a sense of what is in the room or what, what is in the, the yogis, the students, but I can't know. So I have the sense, but to also express them to go inwardly. So I think as a teacher, that is an investigation that you need to, to do or is very valuable that you do it mm -hmm. for yourself because then you will feel secure because you can only express yourself, then you won't, you can lose a word, but I mean, just if you connect inwardly again, you find yourself and you have something to share mm -hmm. and to give out to the, to the room. So I think turning inward and ask yourself, okay, what is it really that I want to give to the world? What is my expression of that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, very beautiful. I've got a comment here from Ajaria, and she's saying, thank you for the advice. The first thing you need, first thing is to find your voice within you. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got so many questions for you in the end, so many things I would like to know about you. 
because this is the type of work you've done for yourself. I want to give the example for those that are not only finding the voice in their first language, but also in English. Mm. As many of them here know that you're from Sweden, all of your first experiences were in Swedish, but you're now also teaching in English. Yes. How did this go for you and what was that experience like? Yeah, <laughs> and that was long ago, as, as we talked about just before you started the live session. I went with Kelly, your teacher as well. So actually, I, I, I finished my first online course yesterday. Oh, wow. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> so actually, I only did those five classes at a festival 2019. Otherwise, I have only been teaching in Swedish. Yeah. So it was a challenge for me deciding to go digitally. That was one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I had to close my, I had a big health center with two yoga studios, yoga educations and different therapists. Mm -hmm. So due to the pandemic, I had to close it down. So that was a process itself. That was 2020. And then reflecting on within myself, okay, what do I want to do? I know that I am walking my path. I know that my purpose is to train yoga teachers, to become authentic yoga teachers guiding from their heart. Mm -hmm. So how can I do that? I didn't want to open another studio for sure. I have done that. I do not want to have my regular classes running from here and there. There's nothing wrong with that. It's such a great experience that I'm so grateful for. I did it for 17 years. So that have learned, that have taught me so many things, but I decided to go digitally. And then I came to the question in, within myself, okay, do I want Sweden as my limit? Hmm. continuing teaching Swedish and I just realized now I want to go global internationally mm -hmm. so actually I do not have I mean I can understand what they are going through depending on where they are with the English of course so I should say the same you can express yourself I mean English isn't my mother tongue everybody can hear that I have my own accent but I'm quite, I think it's cute with accents. So why should I try to change it? I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's even possible. So find your own inner voice, then you need to translate it and practice, of course, the English, depending on how, how fluently it comes. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the same process. It's just one step further. It's the English and being comfortable with that. Yeah. So the best way to do that, I think it's the same way. I should say finding your inner voice, then you need to practice to listen to it yourself. Mm -hmm. So doing that by first listening, just by audio, typing yourself, recording yourself, listen to the voice, listen to your expressions, and then looking at it. And then having yogis look at them, do they follow you? So first finding it in your own voice. So if you are a teacher, then you need to translate it, but do the same process. And the most valuable is to give yourself feedback. Mm -hmm. And that is a tricky thing. Because I mean feedback, like you should give feedback to your best friend. Not like, oh, you sound silly, your accent are awful. Or things that, but really look at the good things, the beautiful things that you do, and then upgrade it. Mm -hmm. But take, I should say, I mean, you have a, an amazing course if to, to learn how to express it in English. But I think the same process when you feel that you want to, to go for the English, to actually listen to yourself, guide yourself vocally speak it out loud and follow yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's really great advice. You touched on so many things that I would like to comment on. And I think what you said about the accents, it's a cute thing to have. I think it really also adds to your authenticity, like who you really are. And 
from all the people that I've been working with in the last years, the accent really was the first fear that they needed to forget about, but also is now one of the things that really makes them stand out and people love it because it really shows who they are. It also shows that they've had the guts or the, 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 the willpower to actually make themselves understood in another language and make that extra effort to be able to communicate with them. So it's a really, really strong thing to have. And like we say here at Enga all the time, a foreign accent is a sign of bravery, is my favorite expression. Um, and what you said about like practice, teaching to yourself, listen to that and give feedback like you would as if you would give feedback to a friend. This is really challenging. What are things that maybe have helped you do this? Because we often are blocked or maybe um, distracted by our fears and limiting beliefs when we do this because we're so hard on ourselves and so judgmental and we, we blame ourselves for every mistake that we make. It's really difficult to actually also give constructive feedback to yourself. Do you have any advice or maybe recommendations? Yes, I think I have. Actually, I, I learned it the hard way, it, both the hard <laughs> way and the soft way. So my, the, hard, the hard way, it was actually one of my teacher trainings that I took. It was, let's say, eight or 10 years ago. And where I, in the hard way, realized feedback for me was criticism. Yeah. So look at the bad things or the, the, the fall things that somebody did. And my teacher had been telling us during our 200 teachers training, look for the good, look for the beauty, and then how can, the, how can you support the person to develop themselves? Mm -hmm. And the first time we should do that in the group, I looked for what, this was a she, what she did wrong. And I expressed it. And he just, for me, it felt like I got a hit in my face. He didn't. He just, ah, but you, you should look for the good things first. And then and I just, I was so embarrassed. I was so ashamed. So I just, well, and, but at that time, it was really valuable it, and still is for me. Because at that moment, I realized, wow, I do not know. At that moment, I learned what is feedback. It's not criticism. But that is, I mean, that has, has to do with my growth my way of growing up but that that way i i realized wow i need to look at it from the other perspective what is good because she did a lot of things really good <laughs> so um and then i started to look at that really um, with open eyes so to speak and then i came into a team where we actually we worked with our participants giving feedback so i learned it that way as well it was a team and i learned from from my my team Mm -hmm. the team leaders but I should say start with small things because it's really even harder for you to do it to yourself so really look at something that is good something good that you do listen to 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 do good things I, I think everybody needs practice on that mm. so even if you see that you criticize yourself that is okay, but just, okay, next time I won't look at that. I will look at something good, a word, an expression or whatever. And start to listen again to the voice first, then look at yourself and then try to practice with somebody that you really trust and feel comfortable with. It can be a sister, a friend, but it can be somebody else as well. Mm -hmm. And then try to ask them about feedback. Yeah, I think it's it, it's a hard thing, but it's really nice when you start to wow. I'm my best friend now. Mm -hmm. I want to look for what am I good at. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, it really helps you to build confidence and to actually see that you're capable, and to to turn or to shift that inner dialogue from, from always being criticizing yourself and judging yourself and telling that you're not good enough or not smart enough or I'm not fast enough, whatever it is, those things are not true because you, for, for those that are here, you've done your teacher training already. Many of you speak multiple languages, 
many of them have actually started their business. So you've already achieved really great things. And look at those things too. Yeah. Now, ideal is saying, I just got the idea that we can also record ourselves as if we are already teaching to students. Then we can do a class as if we are a student and participate in that class. Exactly. That's exactly what you're saying, right, Vivian? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think I, I think that is good for to do it many times. Not 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 all the time, but I mean, then maybe you you have been teaching for half a year or a year or so. Mm -hmm. Do it again and just look at the progress you have been doing, and again give yourself feedback. I think it's one of the best tools mm -hmm. that we often forget. <laughs> Yeah, we often forget doing that. It's yeah. one of the things that we do on the courses as well, but we help each other. So they send recordings to each other and we analyze all together. So I think it's so beneficial. I remember when I first started teaching, I did this all the time. And I think I did it once a month. Every time I had a new sequence, I would do it a few times to just get better at it. And it really, 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 really works. Yeah, takes that's... discipline to do that. <laughs> For sure, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, really. but if you want to get better at something, <clears throat> we need things to track. We need to be able to track that progress. Yeah. Um, you have made a lot of things possible for yourself because you already said you've been teaching for 20 years. You're teaching at festivals. You have your own, let's say, wellness center. People know you from Are You Yoga as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your journey growing into who you are right now and what you offer right now. Yeah. Well, it has been, I mean, the first 10 years, I, I taught classes on a regular basis scheduled and then after that I think that was the time let's say eight years ago I started to have um, one retreat a year I think and then I started to have two retreats a, uh, each year and having some workshops uh, that people were asking for and I also just tried everything out I can remember now that 10 years ago I, I brought my harmonium with me to this gym which was really awkward. Jay, what are you bringing? But they had my trust. So they just left me to do whatever I wanted to. So I have, I had a kirtan there in a way, Sunday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. So I, I guess I have been a little bit curious about investigating. Um, but after that, yeah, let's say eight years ago, um, I felt like I couldn't develop myself anymore at that place. It was the same place I was at still. I had been there for 12 years. And I was one of the persons um, really developing uh, their yoga studio. So it really grew quite yeah. big. And I also brought the Ayurveda uh, therapeutics and, and massage therapies into that space. So, but... I guess I'm a little bit curious about life. What can I do more? So that's my personality. So I, I opened this health center that was quite big um, with 20 therapists and about 10 teachers or so. Um, amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. It was an amazing journey. So I wanted to, to do more. I wanted to, my dream was to open up for, in a bigger perspective for the holistic health mm -hmm. to not only rehab people back from getting burned out and, and all those kinds of things that, that are, are growing as mm -hmm. illnesses. Mm -hmm. So, and we did that. Uh, and unfortunately, and thanks to pandemic, I, I closed it down. I had to. Um, and I was sad at the time. I mean, that was my baby and that was my dream. But now, two years later, I can really see that was meant to be as well. And I know mm -hmm. that. I mean, that is one, one of my biggest um, truths, that everything has its meaning, even if you don't see it at the time. Yeah. So, uh, and in that period, just before opening that health center, I started to to educate, I mean, I created uh, Ayur Yoga Academy um, and started to, to educate yoga teachers. And that was actually inspiration from my yogis because they asked me, can't mm -hmm. you put up a teacher training? Come on, you have been teaching for so many years and we want to be, become yoga teachers. 
So I have been educating teachers for the last seven years. And when I ran that big health center, I actually, um, I mean, it was so many good things, but it was so many things to do as well. It was a big mm -hmm. center, the economics, the, the workshops and everything. So I, I realized at the time that what I was most passionate about was to actually go deeper with people, people mm -hmm. that wanted to do a deeper journey, so to speak. Um, and I think that was what I was best at doing because I, th I believe in that when you are passionate about something, you become good at it yeah. one way or the other or by time. So um, I just decided, okay, I want to do this internationally. Mm -hmm. I didn't know at the time that two years ago, or one and a half a year ago, that I should do it digitally. <laughs> but <laughs> I, yeah, I, I started actually a 300 hours teacher training myself. Just, I just, okay, now I don't have my health center. I have, I have been dreaming of and longing for doing another teacher training myself to have my 500 hours and just for inspiration just to be the student. Mm -hmm. So I did that with a, a great teacher from the States. And since the pandemic had hit us all, he did it digitally. I should have taken it in Berlin, but all of a sudden it was online. And that process, after six months or so, we were halfway into the training. I just, okay, perhaps I should do this and I should do it internationally. And at the same time, somewhere, somehow at Instagram, I met Kelly. Mm -hmm. So I took her web, web, it was a weekend summit or something like that. And I just, wow, this is cool. I like her. And okay, I take her training and, I, and let's see what comes up. So it, it was really resonating with me, both my, my teacher and doing it online mm -hmm. and then meeting Kelly. And because I really felt like, okay, where should I start? I realized it's not only about typing in social media once a week or twice a week. I need strategies here and I don't know this world. So um, yeah, it, was, it has really been an exploring journey, which I'm so grateful for. And that's where I met you. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one and a half year ago, I didn't know anything about, I was on Facebook. That's it, yeah. as everybody is. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was writing and I get really good feedback. Oh, you need to write more. And I have followers from that time, but I mean, I just did it about my own life and my experiences of life and yoga and health. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I really love it because you can create community here, obviously. You can put out, because that was one of my fears, actually. How can I put out my energy into a device like that? But mm -hmm. you can. And you can create a community because, I mean, my course yesterday, that was amazing. It has been 12 amazing weeks and going digitally. So yeah, new experiences, but it has, it's really, it's amazing, challenging. Uh, inspiring and everything at the same time mm -hmm. I think I believe yeah and I really really admire what you do you've come so far obviously I've been following your journey we've been not working on the same program but closely like alongside each other so it's it's really amazing what you're doing and I can see that you have built such an amazing community because the people that are joining through you on this summit They've been so nice and they've all been so active in the group and sending emails and really, really actively engaged with everything. So it's amazing what you do. Well, that is nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> they are they are amazing. I mean, they are the reason why I'm here as a teacher because they are inspiring me to, to do what I do. Yeah. yeah. It's an energy exchange, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. That is the most amazing thing and the most um, inspiring thing mm -hmm. that it really connects people on a 
for me at least on a different level yeah. than I could ever find as a CEO. Hmm. So meeting people, educating them, being a part is such a privilege to be part of one's journey. I'm really, I feel it's, I, I feel so privileged and I, I always try to, to, and I think I can express it, how inspired I get from being a part of their journey. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, it's the best thing ever, I think. <laughs> yeah, I completely, I almost want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you. Absolutely. It's, it, it gets you very not even satisfied like a fulfilled feeling to be able to share that with each other and especially like you said it, how can I express this energy this this devotion maybe that I have to the practice and sharing this with you through a screen or through a device but often these people and I am speaking for myself I've been very alone in this journey because among my friends and family where I lived and where I travel no one really practices yoga. <laughs> yeah. They're not into what I'm doing. So having this type of community and being able to share that journey together, being able to be part of our learning progress too is, yeah, is very fulfilling and really just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it, it yeah. is, I can, I can remember that from, even from my first classes that I gave this twinkling in people's eyes small or big insights it doesn't really matter but the 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 things that really connects them to themselves Mm -hmm. it can be a word it can be a pose it can be a chant it can be something that I'm not really aware of that I'm saying it's Mm -hmm. the energy it's because they actually relax or they found some piece of authenticity in themselves or it can be so many different things, but I feel like it is the sense of that they are coming closer to themselves. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, that's the best beauty, I think. <laughs> it is, it really is. There is the oh, there's this really famous phrase, and I think, I can't remember now, but it speaks about like we never know what impact we have on other people's lives and what kind of memory they will have of you. Um, and it's often, it's not negative. It's, it can be a really, really, really positive thing. Uh, Vivian, we've got a question. What? And it's idea, she said, sorry if I missed it, but did you talk about how you joined Ayurveda and yoga together? We didn't actually speak about this <laughs> detail. <laughs> so this is part of your journey that we missed. Tell us about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, as I mentioned, I, I started with yoga and then 10 years later, Ayurveda came into my, my life. Um, it wasn't um, strange for me because my first teacher actually was living quite Ayurvedic, but I didn't find that interest. But when I really um, took the education in Ayurveda and I saw the impact it did on myself Mm -hmm. and also how easy you can get people to understand the essence of Ayurveda and help themselves to actually live the more balanced and healthier life. So when I created the Ayur Yoga Academy or the education, let's say, the the teacher training, it was quite um, obvious for me or, or it just came to my mind, of course, I need to involve Ayurveda since it's such a great science and it's so combined like sister knowledges or wisdoms uh, to, to have that into the teacher training as well. Because I believe that Ayurveda is really a natural way of living a healthy life in a quite easy way and with really... Um, what can I say, easy recipes or advices, you can make so many big changes in your life and your feeling of health and well-being. So I wanted to involve that of two reasons. One is the reason that the teachers, to be authentic, I believe that you need quite good health. Because if you're struggling a lot with health health issues, I, I don't mean it in a way that you need to have 
completely the best health ever, but if you can map your health up and help yourself first, you can give out your energy and your knowledge better in a better way. So that is one thing. I think that teachers can be more healthy to have Ayurveda involved. I do not force them to it, but so far everybody gets quite inspired by Ayurveda. But also it's so much knowledge so you can actually help your students even even if you do not speak it out that this is vata pitta kapha or you can balance this or that but you can you can give them so much into your yoga class, classes that has topics from ayurveda mm -hmm. just by for instance in sweden we have a lot of windy weather yeah you have as well in uk windy weather a lot of cold and gray mm -hmm. so it's a lot of vata going on with the air you, and I mean, in that cold season, you can actually give classes that balances that up without saying anything about it. If you want to involve it, but if you just want to, to have it into the class, that's fine. And as now we have this warm season, you can put in some of how can I balance Pitta, the fire, in a way without saying it, just when they leave, the, the, I mean, the students will be happy if they go out, coming in overwhelmed and hot and going out, chilled out <laughs> and leave it cool, cool down. Yeah. So, so I think it's bo both for the teacher, but also it's bringing another layer of your teaching. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely love Ayurveda. And I believe that it should be included in every teacher training. Absolutely. You can you can take mine. <laughs> You're so <Exactly>. welcome. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I really think because like you said, it's something that you can so easily apply without actually telling people about it or making them feel like, oh, you should know about this. I'm around my like my inner circle. I'm famous for always speaking about Ayurveda and what they could do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how they are. And I think it's a great tool to, or like knowledge to have also when you're speaking to students to kind of understand where they're coming from, because there are so many things that you can very easily recognize by the way that they are sitting in front of you, the way that they move, that like the body is built. There's so many little details that you can then adjust to while you're teaching them without actually having to share that knowledge and being overwhelmed them with, with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, I do. And Sarah says, that's great. I'm going to work in this direction too. It's amazing what happens when people connect with themselves. And I think she speaks to what we spoke about before and being able to be part of each other's journeys. So... Yes. Everyone that's watching, do you have more questions? Feel free to write them in the chat. I'm just gonna double check to see if I'm not missing out on anything. And for you, Vivian, is there anything else that you would like to add to this? Mm. No, I think, I think always as a teacher, Listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. That is easier said than done, of course. And always fill up your own pot or glass first. Yeah. So, because it is a lot that we are giving out. And if we start to compare ourselves with each and everyone as well, it gets really a lot of press put on us. So believing in yourself, listening to your inner voice, filling yourself up with good things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't only have to be yoga, but I mean, good things. So you feel as fulfilled as you can when, mm -hmm. and then have trust in that you have things to give out to the world. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I think that should be my, my, my best advice and last mm -hmm. advice or... <laughs> Yeah, if not no, anybody has any question more no i don't see any questions coming in but i'm gonna say for those that are here and you go throughout the day and you think oh actually 
I wanted to ask that. Always feel free to write it afterwards. And same for people that are watching the replay in the group or on the online learning platform, write in the comments if you have questions and also just to share your thoughts and your, your maybe ideas and, and things that you have to say about this. And we'll get back to your questions afterwards. Yeah, that is great. And they, they, they can send the question to me as well. I'm not on Facebook right now because I'm hacked, but yeah. I am on <laughs> Instagram. So if they have something about Ayurveda or something like that, that yeah. is fine as well if it goes through you or absolutely yes yeah, so for trying. though where can they find you you're speaking about they can find an instagram where can we find you <laughs> yeah my instagram account is aya a u a underscore ayur yoga academy so ayur a y u r it stands for life yoga academy so I, aya is the community it's the first letters of the three words so aya underscore ayur yoga academy fantastic they can okay. find it on my my name as well they will find me exactly i'm gonna type it in here i'm gonna put the link here and on the platform all your links are there already <laughs> so they'll be fine they'll be able to find it yeah vivian thank you so much for being here and for sharing i really really appreciate it and i absolutely love your energy i can't wait to stay connected with you Thank you, Annie. I'm so, so grateful. I'm so grateful to be here. And I hope it has inspired in one way or the other to, sure. to your students or, and your audience. Your I'm community. very sure. They're say, oh, I do is saying something. I think it's in Turkish. Thanks, Miket. Anna, Anna. I'm not ah, sure. Very Swedish. <laughs> very Swedish. Oh, really? Thanks, Mike. You said it really nice. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> who was that from? Taxa Miket, Anne? Yeah, Taxa Miket, that is Swedish. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm so sorry for confusing. And then it says, Menar Mama Patur. That is maybe that's why I think it. Yeah. Turkiska. Menar Mama Paturkiska, is it also? Swedish? I have not. No. Okay, maybe that might be Turkish then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Ajaya, thank you so much for sharing. It's very inspiring. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'm glad to hear that it was inspiring. It was inspiring for me too. I want to thank you again so much. Thank you. And for those that are here, I see you tomorrow at 12. It's a little bit later than the, the sessions that we did the last two days. At 12 p.m., we're going to be live with Manu, and he's going to tell you all about how you can host your own retreat, so how you can be a retreat leader. Then at 2, I'll be live to take you through six steps to become an international yoga teacher. Wow. I will look at that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And then at 4, we're going to be live to find out how you can find your voice according to your astrology chart. So I'm really excited about that too with Jeremy Deffins. Oh yeah, I just says thank you very much. It means mom in Turkish. Oh, interesting. What? Mom. Which said, ideal says Anna means mom in Turkish. Aha. Uh -huh. And she I, said, Yeah. Menar Mama Bartukis. Okay, I think I, I can see now. Menar probably means mom in Turkish. Mm. She calls you your mom. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Vivian. I will connect tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you, Annie. Rest of your day. Thanks. Bye bye.